Welcome to Symphony Workshop and Gary Clark and this is part two of a multi-part tutorial in which I'm demonstrating how to consume a third-party API using Symphony's HTTP client and test-driven development. If you didn't see part one I'll leave a link to that at the top of the screen and if you want to pick up where that left off I'll also leave a link to the repo you just need to choose the part one branch and that will get you up to speed. In part one we did quite a lot of test setup and configuration and so in this one we're going to start driving out functionality using feature tests and our end goal is to have a system which can be automated to ping a third party API, in our case Yahoo Finance, grab some data and store that data in the database. Before we get into that stuff let me just inform you that I record in high resolution so you don't need to watch on a blurry screen. Choose high definition if that works for you. And would you like to join a growing group of PHP developers and take your skills to a new level? If so, all you need to do is subscribe and click the little notification icon. So let's have a quick look at where we left off. We created this stock test for just testing that we can create a stock entity and deposit it in the database. I'll we'll just run that and to prove it works. So we're making seven assertions against all the fields that we can add. Before we get stuck in, I'm just going to enhance our setup and tear down. So I'm voiding the return and for the tear down, I'm just going to close down the entity manager and set it to null so that the, we don't have an entity manager which is still hanging on to data from previous tests which would be bad. And so with that done let's get into the good stuff and I'm going to start by creating a feature folder in my tests folder and this is going to hold my feature tests which are entire pieces of functionality from start to finish. So normally you'd think of them as your request and response when using HTTP. We're actually building an automated process and we're going to use commands. So it would be that entire process of um, executing a command, hitting the API and getting the data back and storing it. That is the full feature. So inside of there, I've created a test called refresh stock profile command test, which again extends kernel test case. And I'm just pasting in the setup and teardown from my stock test. So it is blatant duplication, but we're going to stick to the uh, rule of three principle here, which says that it's probably not much to be gained by refactoring if you've only got two duplicates. But once you have three or more, then it's worth considering refactoring. So here's our test. Uh, for lack of a better name for now, I'm just going to call it the refresh stock profile command behaves correctly. Exactly the same steps as our stock test to set up, do something, make assertions. Let's go over to the console and if I put symphony console, what you see here is a list of commands with their descriptions which says exactly what they do or gives you a, an idea what they do. What I want to do is create a command and I want to be able to execute it using something like this. Symphony console app colon refresh stock profile. And we're going to create the command and drive out all of its functionality using our feature test. So like most things in Symfony, commands are easily testable and there are helper classes which will help us do that. So first off, I need to access this application class. So I think I've got the right one here. We'll soon find out if I haven't. And then using this application class or using our application object that we've just created, um, we can then find our command. The way we do that is like this, command equals application find, and then we just use the string which makes up the command name. And so this is a becomes a static property on the class as we'll see shortly. What I'm creating here is a command tester instance, which is an instance of the command tester class. And this is a special class which helps us test um, Symfony console commands. And the way we do it is we can just execute the command like this, command tester execute. Our console commands can take um, arguments and we're going to take advantage of that because there's some information which we will need to pass to the API in order to get the information back. And those things are the symbol, as in the stock symbol, and we also will need the region. So we can pass these two pieces of information into the command as our arguments. And this is what we mean here. So if we look at the API documentation, it says we need the symbol and the region there. So obviously the execution of the command is the do something part of our test. We then need to follow that up with some assertions. And all we're going to assert is that 
uh, after executing the command that a record has been created in the database and that data will be what was retrieved from the Yahoo Finance API. So I'm just calling find one by on the repository, on the stock repository, find one by symbol Amazon. So there should only be one record in the database if this is run correctly. I just need to check that the fields contain the values that I'm expecting. So for all these string values here, uh, currency exchange name, they're going to be the same each time anyway. So I know what to expect there. But for previous close and for the stock price, well, those things are going to vary. So I'm just going to put in a sensible assertion here to assert that the value is greater than 50. All of our assertions are in place. Let's run the test and see where that gets us. So PHP, PHP unit test feature refresh stock profile command test. And already we can see we have an error. And my guess was incorrect. I had the wrong application. So instead of um, that one, what we actually need is this Symfony Bundle Framework Bundle Console application. Let's run the test again. And we have a, an, our next error. So this is good. It says there are no commands defined in the app namespace. And so we've defined our command here. It's telling us that this doesn't exist. So let's go and create it. So each step of the way, we're asking PHP unit for something and PHP unit is telling us what to do in order to get it. So I'm creating the command here, which you can do from the console with Symfony console, make colon command, then just give the command name. Let's go and see what was created. So in source command, we have this refresh stock profile command. So it's taken the hyphenated refresh stock profile part of the name that we specified and then created a class name out of that by appending the word command on the end. Let's run the tests again. Okay, progress. So now it's saying that the symbol argument does not exist. So if we look at the do something part of our test, we are trying to execute the command and we've passed in a symbol argument. If we look at the uh, refresh stock profile command class, it's split into two methods, configure and execute. In the configure part of the test, this is where you specify your arguments. So we're going to replace this default of our guan and we'll create our own. And we're going to say that it is required. We need to give it a description and we'll just say that this is the stock symbol, e.g. AMZN for Amazon. We might as well add our region um, argument while we're here. We'll also give that a description, region of the company and this set description. Uh, method it is the description for the entire command. What does the command do? With that in place, let's run the tests again. Our next error, the arg1 argument does not exist. So if we look at the execute method of the command, we have all this default stuff which is already placed in there. Let's delete that, run the tests again, and now we're getting somewhere. Call to member function get currency on null from line 61 of our test. Let's go and see what that is. So it's saying we're calling get currency on null. So no stock was found in the database. This is good because this tells us what needs to happen next. With test driven development, you're constantly looking for your shortest path back to green. And so that's what we're gonna do here by creating a stock and then just giving it the field values that our test is expecting. Hopefully we'll get green and then we'll go back and refactor from there to get us to this point. So you don't need to see me add all of these. I'll just speed up the editing a bit there. And then we're going to need an entity manager to persist this. So let's create a constructor and we'll inject it into that. So I don't actually need this uh, default argument here. So I'm just going to delete that. And then what I'll do is I'll pass in an entity manager interface which I'll call Entity Manager, and using PHP Storm, I'll just initialize that property. In your console command constructors, also make sure that your assignments go before the parent construct call. And so what we're doing here now is that we are gonna say, this Entity Manager persist, and we'll pass in the stock. And then we just need to call this Entity Manager flush. And with that, we'll go back to the test and see where that gets us. And we have green. So this is good. Now that we know that we can execute a command 
and that in executing the command we can store a stock record in the database. What we need to figure out now is working backwards what are the steps which precede that which will get us that data to add to the database. So we need to ping the Yahoo API, grab the response, update the record if it exists, if the record doesn't exist, we need to create one. So that's the route we're going to go down. So we'll make a change to the name of this test and we'll say refresh the stock profile command behaves correctly when a stock record does not exist. And we'll delete this step there and maybe create another test for updating existing records at a later point. These are now our steps. Ping the Yahoo API and grab a response, which will be a stock profile then use the stock profile to create a record if it doesn't exist. We're expecting to have a stock profile, so let's replace all of these values with that and the fields on that stock profile. So for currency, it will be stock profile currency. For exchange name, it will be stock profile exchange name. I'm sure you get the gist, I'll race through some of these. So all of our fields can map directly except for this last one, price change, which we're going to calculate ourselves. And that will be the stock profile price minus the stock profile previous close. Uh, we'll just grab that and copy that in. And then all we need to do is go back and run our tests and see what happens. OK. Undefined variable stock profile, which is exactly what we're expecting because we don't have a stock profile. We're going to need to grab that from the Yahoo API. But this is good because it gives us a chance to think about our code, what we'd like it to look like, and what kind of experience we'd like another developer to have when they come and use our code for the first time. For a first attempt, how about something like this? So we need to get a stock profile. How about stock profile equals this Yahoo Finance API client. So we can have a client class, which is a property of our command. And then we just need a logical method name to call off of that client. Let's call it fetch stock profiles. No ambiguity there. We already know that the Yahoo Finance API is going to need some information from us, which is the stock symbol and the region. And we already have those because we passed them into the command as arguments. This looks pretty good to me. It's one line, it's easily readable. Anyone should be able to know what's happening here. Let's go to our test. Hopefully it'll tell us that we don't have a Yahoo Finance API client. And that's exactly what we get. Refresh stock profile command, Yahoo Finance API client property does not exist. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to create that. What I'm gonna do is in the constructor, I'm gonna make up a class called Yahoo Finance API client. I shall initialize that as a property. Remember, you need to add the assignments above the parent construct method. Run our tests again, and here's our next error, and it's saying that the Yahoo Finance API client class was not found. And so this is how it works. We're trying to take our shortest path back to green, and each step of the way, PHP unit will tell us what's missing, what do we need to add, what do we need to do. So what I'm doing here is I've created a folder called HTTP in the source folder and then inside of that I'm creating the Yahoo Finance API client class. Back to the command and we'll modify our um, constructor injection to use our new class that we've just created. Let's remove all the old references and we'll just reinitialize this property. Don't forget to make sure that you move the assignment above parent construct. Run the tests again. Okay. We're on to our next step, call to undefined method, fetch stock profile. So we have our Yahoo Finance API client class now, but what it's saying is that we don't have a fetch stock profile method on that class. Let's create that. Of course, we'll need to match the signature that we specified in our command. So it's going to take a symbol and a region as an argument. Then we'll go back, run the tests and see what we have next trying to get property currency of a non-object, line 55. So down to line 55, and as you can see here, we're trying to access a currency property on a stock profile, but we don't actually have a stock profile. And we won't actually have a stock profile until this method is working properly. So we've hit a dependency, we've took this as far as we can get. We can't move on until this fetch stock profile method is fully functional. 
So we're going to divert our attention and get that working fully. In order for that to work fully, it needs to connect to a third party. So we need to write a special kind of test called an integration test. I think that's a good place for us to pause because integration test is worthy of a lesson all in itself. And that's what we'll cover in the next one. I hope you've enjoyed working through this one. Be sure to give it a like if so, and don't hesitate to share if you want to help other developers like yourself. Help each other out, that's what this channel is all about. And if you want YouTube to show you more of my stuff, all you need to do is subscribe and click the little notification icon. I release new material two times a week, and details of my schedule can be found on the discussion tab of my YouTube homepage.